Good morning and welcome to all of you on this beautiful Sunday morning. We got very lucky. Yeah, yeah we did. I'm so glad you are here either in person or worshiping with us online. A few announcements before we begin. This Sunday and next Sunday are Diaper Sunday. We're collecting diapers for many mothers. You can see some of them here in front of the table. They're looking for sizes three to five. Many Mothers provides free in-home support to Santa Fe families with new babies, including weekly visits from trained volunteers. If you have any other questions about this project or about Many Mothers, please contact Kathleen Watson Nadler. The Upper Room devotionals for September, October have arrived. They can be found on tables as you exit. If there are no more copies, please let me know and I will go grab a few more from the office. As you all know, per our COVID-19 safe protocols for worship, we have moved our worship back outside. As New Mexico re-enters an indoor mask mandate and Santa Fe County enters red per the CDC high level of community transmission of COVID, Westminster's session and myself continue to be committed to following our COVID-19 safe protocols. The COVID-19 work group will take a close look at our protocols over the next few weeks and any revisions and updates will be voted on at the next session meeting. As Christians, we are called to care for the most vulnerable among us and worshiping outdoors is one way we can do that. We are grateful for your continued compliance with our protocols. We know that this is a frustrating step to have taken. We know that God walks with us no matter where we go, even when we worship in non-traditional spaces. Unless you are actively leading worship, please keep your masks on and regardless of whether or not you're leading worship, please maintain social distance as you are able. If you missed them on the way in, please fill out a contact tracing form on the way out the door. The restrooms are open. Please follow the posted instructions. These protocols are all here to help keep us and our community safe. If for any reason you feel that you cannot abide by them or that you do not feel safe coming to in-person worship, you are welcome to continue worshiping with us online. Durante ese tiempo de COVID, seguimos siendo la iglesia, adorando a Dios juntos, aunque no estemos en todos juntos en un solo espacio. En Dios somos una iglesia más grande de lo que podría contener cualquier edificio. Gracias. Adiós. During this time of COVID, we continue to be the church, worshiping God together, even though we are not all together in one space. In God, we are made one church, bigger than any building might contain. Thanks be to God. Este es el día que hizo el Señor. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us come together to worship God with these words from Psalm 84. Cuán hermoso es tu santuario, Señor Todopoderoso. Con qué ansia y fervor deseo entrar en los atrios de tu templo. Con todo el corazón, canto alegre al Dios de la vida. Aún el gorión y la golondrina hayan lugar, hayan lugar en tus altares, donde hacerles nido a tus polluelos, oh Señor Todoporoso, Rey mío y Dios mío. Felices los que viven en tu templo y te alaban sin cesar, Señor Todoporoso. Felices los que en ti confían.
come before God not as despised sinners, but as beloved children. With the confidence of children of God, let us humbly confess our sin. Let us pray. Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fear and jealousy that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Cualquiera que está en Cristo, nueva criatura es. El pasado ha quedado atrás. Todo vuelve a ser puro y nuevo. Beloved, believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Speak to us, living God, as you have spoken to our ancestors through the voices of your prophets, the breath of your spirit, and the life of your son, that, so that we may live according to your word through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. A reading from John 6, 56 through 69, begins in the middle of Jesus' teaching about the bread of life. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The word of the Lord. La lectura bíblica se encuentra en Juan. El que come mi carne y bebe mi sangre vive unido a mí, y yo vivo unido a él. El Padre que me ha enviado tiene vida, y yo vivo por él. 
De la misma manera, el que se alimenta de mí, vivirá por mí. Hablo del pan que ha bajado, bajado del cielo. Este pan no es como el maná que comieron los antepasados de ustedes, que a pesar de haberlo comido murieron. El que come de este pan vivirá para siempre. Jesús enseñó estas cosas en la sinagoga en Cafarnaum. Al oír estas enseñanzas, muchos de los que seguían a Jesús dijeron, Esto que dice es muy difícil de aceptar. ¿Quién puede hacerlo caso? Jesús, dándose cuenta de lo que estaban murmurando, les preguntó, ¿Esto les ofende? ¿Qué pasaría entonces si vieran al Hijo del Hombre subir a donde antes estaba? El Espíritu es el que da vida. Lo carnal no sirve para nada. Y las cosas que yo les he dicho son Espíritu y vida. Pero todavía hay algunos de ustedes que no creen. Es que Jesús sabía desde el principio quiénes eran los que no creían. ¿Y quién era el que lo iba a traicionar? Y añadió, Por esto les he dicho que nadie puede venir a mí, si el Padre no se lo concede. Desde entonces, muchos de los que habían seguido a Jesús lo dejaron, y ya no andaba con él. Jesús le preguntó a los doce discípulos, ¿También ustedes quieren irse? Simón Pedro le contestó, Señor, ¿a quién podemos ir? Tus palabras son palabras de vida eterna. Nosotros ya hemos creído y sabemos que tú eres el santo de Dios. Esto es palabra de Dios. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Does this offend you? What a question. It's hard to hear this question outside of our own cultural context, right? with a new cultural awareness of racism and sexism and ableism and so many other isms. And in addition, the pushback against that awareness. Of course, for so many people in our society, this is not a new awareness at all. It's just that the rest of us have come to understand what they already knew down to their bones. During seminary, a classmate described something as girly and then dismissed it entirely. Wow, I said, not cool. What, he replied, did I offend you? I'm sure I'm not the only one who has had an experience like that, where the implication is that we should be embarrassed to have suggested that someone offended us. It's a social tactic used to uphold the status quo. For the record, one very easy way to disrupt it is to answer the question as though it is being honestly asked. Yes, I said, you did. And then I walked away. This is our cultural context for the question, does this offend you? It doesn't mean it's the only context. Jesus's teachings are complex. They buck tradition or return to roots nearly forgotten. He turns religious practice on its head. Often, he seems somewhat unaware of the difficulties and challenges he is creating for his followers. His disciples are right. This teaching is hard they say. Who can accept it? Because what does I am the bread of life actually mean? 
what does Jesus really mean when he says that those who eat of the bread of life will live forever? Is he talking about immortality, resurrection, reincarnation? Is it entirely spiritual and not bodily at all? Yeah, we're still debating on those questions in the church. 2,000 years later, this teaching is hard. And since the church began, we have been debating the nature of Jesus' identity as the bread of life, the vine. What does it mean when we partake in the body and blood of Christ at this table? And despite the promise that we will never be hungry again, we know that this speaks to a spiritual hunger, not a physical hunger. hunger. Or perhaps I'm just very bad at partaking in the bread of life. This teaching is hard. Does it offend you? Because as those of you who have been attending worship where I have preached know, I think that translation and interpretation really matter. It's important to note that the word translated here as offend is the word skandaliso in Greek. Yes, also the root of the word scandal. Scandaliso, though, digs deeper into offense than our general usage of you hurt my feelings. Some of the de defini definitions for scandaliso include to put a snare in the way, to cause to stumble, to hinder right conduct or thought, literally to fall into a trap. This is a much broader and deeper word than simple hurt feelings. And so what Jesus is really asking is, does this teaching form a stumbling block for you? Does it hinder your conduct? Is it, in other words, a bit too much for you? This is not an accusation, not really. This is Jesus trying to help his disciples assess their readiness to follow him fully. And John's gospel tells us that because it was indeed an honest question, some of Jesus's followers did indeed depart. Because of this, John writes, many, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. But others stayed. I find this comforting and a little bit exhausting. Following Jesus is a choice, and it is a choice that regularly places stumbling blocks before us. So much of who we are called to be and what we are called to do in the world as Christians is counter to broader social expectations. Welcome strangers into your home. I don't know about you, but I barely like having people I know in my house, <laughs> let alone strangers. Care for the widow, the orphan, and the foreigner. Endless debates about social welfare, about immigration reform, about education, and in the end, too few people cared for. Love your neighbor as yourself, and everyone is your neighbor, even and perhaps most especially your enemies. Do these teachings offend you? They certainly run counter to American culture. There's a phrase that appears in our Book of Order a few times and is well known in broader Christianity, a scandal to the gospel and its close relation, the scandal of the gospel. Both point to the countercultural message given and the countercultural action required by Christ the gospel, the good news, causes a stumbling block in our culture, and our culture causes us to stumble 
as we try to live out the good news. Are we ready to follow that teaching? In the lectionary cycle, this reading from John is paired with a reading from Joshua 1 that I think will be familiar to you. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and some of the elders, the head, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Choose this day whom you will serve. It's an earlier iteration of Jesus' question. This is the history we see in the Hebrew Testament of people trying their hardest to live into their choice to serve God with all the mixed failure and success that the word trying implies. They try and they succeed and they try and they fail and God continues to send prophets to them over and over to send signs and aid to help them continue to choose to serve the Lord. And not just to make that choice, but to succeed in it. Who do we serve? Far too often it is the gods of independence, of capitalism, of self-reliance, of isolation, of violence. But I think, too, that we often see glimpses of our own commitment to serve God. God who sees us, who nurtures us, God who asks hard things of us and also accompanies us on that hard way. God who calls us to live out God's kingdom come, to work to close the gap between the now and the not yet. God who sets a table before us, a table with cups that overflow with living water and bread that satisfies our every hunger. God who extends this question, this offer, this choice to us over and over again. God who loves us when we succeed and when we fail and welcomes us back joyfully. This choice, this question, it's not a one-time deal. We recommit ourselves to it over and over again. We are all of us doing the best that we can to live out our calling to love God and to love neighbor, to care for the most vulnerable among us, to work toward abundant life for all. Y'all don't need me to tell you this, but I will anyway. This work is hard. It is never ending. When Jesus asks his followers, does this offend you? He's not worried about hurt feelings, and he's not dismissing their concerns. 
He's reminding them and us that following his teachings is a choice. And it's a choice we are always free to walk away from and to return to. In her book, Searching for Sunday, Rachel Held Evans wrote of the disciples that they were not anyone's idea of an A team. They were nobodies. Fishermen and tax collectors and people no one in power really cared about. They were hungry and they found living bread in Jesus. Good thing for us, eh? There's an almost bemused tone to Simon Peter's answer to Jesus's question. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. They follow Jesus, however imperfectly, because they have made a choice to believe and to know. And that choice is in the response of the Hebrew people as well, a sort of helpless love. It is the Lord our God who brought us out of us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great things in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. Who else might they serve? And that choice is ours as well. Each Sunday when we come to worship, when we ought to serve others before ourselves, when we choose to love our neighbors no matter what, when we choose day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, to follow the teachings of this one we call the Christ, even and perhaps most especially when those teachings are indeed a scandal. We stumble, we fall flat on our faces, and we get up again. Being a Christ follower is a practice a journey we follow. We may never arrive anywhere. I'm not sure where there even would be, but it is this journey to which we are called to live a life of radical welcome and love, knowing that God loves us when we succeed and when we fail. And we are always, always, Welcome. May it be so. Amen. the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Heaven and earth are yours, O Lord, and of your own 
we give you. Let us present to God our lives and offerings, grateful for the gifts we have been given. If you are watching online, I invite you to gather your offering and prepare it to be delivered to the church. Write a check, put a stamp on an envelope. For those of you here on the back patio, you are invited to drop your offering in either plate on the communion table as you leave this space. If you have brought diapers for many mothers, you may leave those at the foot of the table as you depart. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now as a community gathered together, we pray the prayers of the people, of this people and of all peoples. Today's prayer will include space for you to offer up your own prayers in the silence of your heart, knowing that even when we pray in silence, we pray together and God hears our prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called us to love and pray for each other as you love and pray for us. Hear our prayers and petitions. Creator God, you spoke and the world formed. You breathed and life sprang forth. You looked on what you had made and you called it and us good. Hear our prayers for your creation for places where the earth quakes and fires rage, for flooded fields and lean harvests, for oil spills and spoiled water, for human-created climate change and destruction, and for all in creation we lift up in our hearts this day, especially for the destruction in Haiti. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for creation. Peacemaker God, you created all of us and called us to be neighbors, to love one another and to live in peace. Hear our prayers for all the times and places we fail to live as neighbors, for segregated cities and lack of housing, for mass incarceration and mass deportation for wars and conflicts pitting us against each other, and for all we name now in need of your peace, especially the students, staff, and families of Washington Middle School in Albuquerque and the people of Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for peace. Compassionate God, you wept with Rachel and you laughed with Sarah. You danced with Miriam and you gave hope to Hagar. Hear our prayers for ourselves and all who need your compassion. For those who mourn and those who rejoice. For those who are sick and those who are well. For those who are lost and those who are found, and for all in your care we name now, for Carmen and Suzanne and Bill, and especially all those infected with COVID-19, and for all of us as we struggle with the effects of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for compassion. 
life-giving God, you dwell with the communion of saints, your beloved, from every time and place. With grief and thanksgiving, we lift up the names of all those who have died and are now with you, especially Dean Lewis and Marion Goad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for abundant life. Teacher God, through Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray. Hear us now as we pray that prayer together. Padre nuestro, que estás en los cielos, santificado te sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, como en el cielo, así también en la tierra. El pan nuestro de cada día. Danos lo hoy, y perdonanos nuestras deudas, como también perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos deje caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por todos los siglos. Amén. O oh God, you have called us to ventures where we cannot see the end, by paths never yet taken, through perils unknown. Give us good courage, not knowing where we go, to know that your hand is leading us wherever we may go. May the blessing of the Holy Triune God, who was and is and is to come, first and last, beginning and end, Alpha and Omega, be with you now and always. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all.